Um, um, my name is Mark Katema. I am one of the product managers on the Tableau prep team. Uh, and it's been a total, total, total honor to work on this product. Uh, ever s I, I joined the team when we were just releasing uh, our first beta. Uh, and now uh, with the V1 launch, uh, five monthly releases since April, uh, and now the introduction of uh, Tableau Prep Conductor in 2019.1 beta. So I hope you're all excited about that. By a show of hands, how many of you have used Tableau Prep before? Okay, good. Awesome. Uh, how many of you have heard of Tableau Prep? Sweet. I, I, I'm glad that it's everybody. Um, so as you know, Tableau Prep is a product that we came out with uh, to help you better clean and shape your data uh, and get it ready for, for analysis. Quick question. How many of you have ever been to a video store to rent a movie? Uh, it should be everybody, right? Yeah. So a lot of people will, and it, you know, it, a long time ago, <laughs> when there were still dinosaurs, <laughs> uh, people would visit video stores like Blockbusters to go and rent their movies, right? It's a Friday night. You need to unwind. Kick up your sh kick up your boots and say, "Hey, let me let me watch uh, this comedy or this horror movie or this thriller and just kind of relax after a long week of work." And so you get to the video store and you would roam the shelves, right? Shelf after shelf after shelf, because chances are you don't actually know what you wanted to rent prior to walking into the video store, and. You know, you stop by the horror section, you say, ah, maybe tonight's not a horror kind of night. Uh, or you drop by the drama or the action section, and you just continue to roam and around the, the video store until you pick your movie or the set of movies that uh, you, you want to deal with or you want to watch uh, that evening. Now, how many of you would usually go to the video store with a group of people? Either a spouse, or your children, or your friends. Let me see a show of hands. That's most people. Now, that usually complicates the equation, right? Because when multiple opinions are introduced into the equation, then it becomes even harder, right? Now, this is the, this is the image that makes me think of going to the video store with other people. Is you just have too many cooks in the kitchen, too many opinions, and sometimes it just becomes very hard to walk away with a movie or a set of movies that everybody will be happy with. So for me, the uh, antagonist in my story is my younger brother. And as kids, we would visit the we'd visit Blockbuster. You know, when school would go out, my mom would take us. My mom's on the left there, and she would say, "Hey." Mariki, you get to pick one movie. Caduce, you get to pick one movie. And the two of you get to pick the third movie together. Right? She was trying to teach us how to work together. And right, a fight would ensue every single time. Uh, and, and we still haven't really learned to work together, but we'll work on it. <laughs> um, and so there's a little bit of a cycle that develops, right? You say, hey, I want to watch a movie. You arrive at the video store. You roam the shelves. You argue with family and friends. You pick out the movies. You go home. How many of you pick out the movie, go home, and then realize 10 minutes into it that, hmm, I picked the wrong movie. I'm bored. Yeah? I've, that's happened to me many times. And so you can't drive back to the video store. So you're stuck watching the movie, right? This cycle is going only in one direction. But really, you need that cycle to go in many directions. So that if the movie doesn't work for you after 10 minutes, you can just quickly select the next one. There's a similar cycle called the cycle of analytics that customers typically run into when they're analyzing their data. And similarly to the situation that we just talked about, you want your cycle of analytics to be a lot more flexible, right? Now, can anyone tell me where a majority of users' time is spent in this cycle? Get, oops, get the data. Yes. 
In fact, the Harvard Business Review came out with a study that said that 80% of an analyst's time was spent preparing the data, and only 20% of their time was spent, an spent analyzing it. Now, the big money maker, the, the, the place where you are deriving the biggest value is when you are analyzing your data. And so we wanted to optimize for, for that, so that you could be deriving insights from your data and providing value to your organization. Now, how many of you have ever done data prep in Excel? That's most people. It's often very, 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 very hard to understand what you're doing. The learning curve is pretty steep, and you can't really come back to it and, and, and realize, hey, these were the set of things that I did to clean my data, right? And a majority of our customers were actually spending their time preparing their data inside Excel. Now, an even smaller percentage were writing scripting languages like Python and uh, SQL. Now, I'm a computer science, I was a computer science major in college. I'm, I was a software engineer at Tableau for two years before becoming a product manager. I love writing code, but I hate writing code to clean data because it's just hard. Now, an even smaller percentage, a very specialized group of people will use specialized ETL tools. But again, the learning curve for these is very steep. And typically, these individuals are, are data scientists. They're, they're PhDs or, or, master, or master level individuals who uh, have expertise in this particular area. Here's the sad part. There is a very large group of people that just were not analyzing their data because the data prep process was just so, so, so difficult and so daunting. And so it's with this realization that we said, hey, we need to flip that ratio so that, you were, you're, so that you're spending 20% of your time preparing your data and about 80% of it analyzing it. So we launched Tableau Prep on April 24th with the mission of helping everyone quickly and confidently get their data ready for analysis. Here's a quote by one of our wonderful Zen masters. His name is Joshua Milligan. Uh, and he is an individual who's been engaged with, the Tableau, with Tableau Prep ever since uh, our first alphas. And he tweeted, uh, I think during the betas, he says, it keeps you in the flow of thought for shaping the data like Tableau does for visual analytics. And honestly, that is what is at the core of what it means to prepare your data the Tableau Prep way. What we've done is we've brought sort of the magic and secret sauce behind Tableau Desktop and what it did for visual analytics to the, to the data prep space. So our conversation today is going to be uh, centered around what I call three pillars. And these are the three pillars that really define Tableau Prep and what it means to prepare your data the Tableau Prep way. Now, these were the design principles that we used when we were building out this product. And these are also the same design principles that exist for Tableau Desktop today. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use these to help orient our conversation today. So here's the first one, visual and direct. What does that mean? That means that any time I act on my data, I can see what's happening. I can see the results. I do a quick cleaning, I create a calculated field, I, I uh, group some stuff, I delete some stuff, I can see the results right away. Here's the other piece. We have built-in visualizations into the product. Now these are, in, in the middle here, what you're seeing is what we call the profile. And within the profile is a histogram that shows you the distribution of values for that particular field. And that's super, super, super powerful because it helps you identify outliers very quickly. We use color in a really special way to help you stay in the flow of your data preparation. Uh, and I'll explain a little bit about that in a moment. And again, here's another example of how we're using uh, visualizations and even color to help you orient yourself, but also to help you identify what might be going wrong in your, uh, in your join or in, in, in the different transformations along the way. So with that, let's jump into Tableau Prep. Okay, so here's Tableau Prep, and I'm just going to give you all a general overview of the, 
of the product before we jump into the, the demo. Uh, so here are all of the different connectors that we have in the product today, and we're continuing to add more connectors as, as time goes on. Let me quickly open up a sample, just so we can orient ourselves, like I said. So here's the Superstore sample. Um, and so at, at the top here is what we call the flow paint. And this allows you to see your flow end to end and understand all the ways in which you've transformed and cleaned your data. In the middle here is what we call our profile pane. And this is really our secret sauce because you can see summaries of your data and you can interact with your data right there. So let me show you. For example, imagine I click on first class. When I clicked on first class, I got proportional brushing across the profile pane so I could understand how this value maps to other values in my other fields. And I can do the same thing and just click around to better understand what's going on. At the bottom here is what we call the data grid. Now this is a familiar spreadsheet view of your data. And what this allows you to, to know is, hey, what is the state of my table at any point in time? And it, this, is the view, this is a view that also follows you throughout your data prep workflow. When you're clicking on different values, your data grid is constantly updating all the time. Now, let's, let's click on a value that won't have a lot of uh, things on it. So for example, I just clicked on Montana, and now I'm only seeing rows of data for Montana. I'm going to take questions at the end, sorry. OK. Now let's jump into our demo. So today we're going to be looking at movie data just to stay within the theme of our earlier conversation. So I have five different data sources. Uh, three of them are very similar to each other, and the other two are very similar to each other as well. So I'll, let me explain. All the ones that have year indicators, right, 2015, 2016, 2014, are Chicago movie park, sorry, Chicago park movie viewings. So when, when a park hosts a movie viewing uh, for any given, at, at, at any given time. And then the movie rating and movie titles uh, inputs or tables right here are all about uh, IMD movie, IMDb movies and ratings. The question we want to answer today is, which park is showing the highest rated movies? That's pretty interesting, right? OK. So right off the bat, I'm going to go ahead and open my movie titles table. And let's just take a look at it. So here, what I did was I just right clicked, sorry, I clicked on this plus sign and added a step. Now, we have six fields here, genre, uh, a const field that has a distinct ID associated with each movie, movie title, start year, et cetera. Now, if you take a look at all of these start years, if you take a look at this histogram, it shows you the distribution of data. Now, there was obviously nothing going on. I mean, there weren't very many movies being made in the early 1900s. In fact, a majority of the movies were being made between the 80s and, uh, and now. So we're going to need to filter our data just to, just to get it, uh, just to narrow in on, on the, the, the data that's most important to us. So I'm going to create a filter, just click on the dot, dot, dot menu, filter, and I'm going to do a range of dates. How many of you have seen a filter that looks like this before? Yeah, because it's exactly the same as the one that we have in Tableau Desktop. So I'm just going to adjust it. We're not in 2030. All I want is data up until 2017. And now my data has updated. Notice how the profile card is totally updated. We no longer see the data that was extraneous. And my data grid has also updated, which is pretty cool. Great. So now I think I'm ready to join my two movie data sets, the movie ratings and movie titles. Joining, unioning, unioning is as easy as drag and drop. Watch. 
I'll just drag and drop to join. And it automatically recognized that my join should take place based off the T const ID field that we had. And that's correct. Now, it's going to go ahead and render. And here is the second visualization that I uh, talked about earlier. So it tells us that we started with 130,000 plus rows from one table, joined with 130,000 plus rows from another, and ended up with about 130,000 plus rows in our results. It also shows me what was excluded, which is super powerful. And in fact, I can drill in to what's included, what's excluded, so I can do a little bit more of a deeper dive and understand, should this really have been excluded? Notice here that we have our diagram that tells us a little bit about our join type. And adjusting the join type is as easy as just clicking around and seeing your data update and understand, hey, this is the right join for me, this is not the right join for me, and so on. OK. This middle area right here shows you what is going on in your join clause, what was excluded, what was included, so that you can quickly identify and compare and make sure that everything is as you expect it to look. Remember our three coordinated panes that I mentioned earlier, the profile pane, the, the, sorry, the flow pane, the profile pane, and the data grid? All three of those followed us into the join experience. And I can see the results of my join right here. I don't need to output the data. I don't need to open it in a different way. I don't need to open it in Tableau at this point. I can if I want to, but I don't need to do that because I can just see my data right here and now. Here's the other thing that I want to mention. Colors are very important in Tableau prep. And they're very important to our story around visual and direct. Notice how the movie titles table is denoted by the orange color, and the movie ratings table is denoted by the pink color. And you can see in your join results which fields are coming from which table. So for example, runtime minutes is coming from our orange table, and average rating is coming from our pink table. And you can see the results now have a different color associated with them since we've now created a brand new table based off that join. OK. So that's a little bit about the join, and we'll do another join a little later as well, so you guys have an, a, another exposure to it. Now at this point, I know that I have uh, data on Chicago Park movie viewings from 2014 to 2016, and I just need to union all of those uh, tables. So let's just do that. Again, drag and drop. I'm going to drag and drop this one as well and just add it to the union. And huzzah, there we go. Remember the color denotings I mentioned earlier? So now we have like a, I don't know what color this is, a teal sort of? Yeah, like a teal, a green, and a blue. And we can see which uh, fields are coming from which table, right? Like, for example, all three of the tables had a movie name. And so when we unioned, we were fine. Great. All three of the, tab all three of the tables had a phone field. Awesome. And so and you can see with the colors. Now, take a look at a field like uh, event URL. Only the blue table has event URL, and the rest don't. So there might be a mismatch. There might be uh, fields that are missing, but let's find out. What we're, what we're going to do is we're going to look at all of the mismatched fields by clicking on this checkbox here. And when we do that, we can see all of the fields that basically have like a little white indicator uh, in, the, in the bar here. So if you look at, for example, event URL, there's an event URL field that is coming from the blue, and there's an event URL field that's coming from teal and green. They, those two fields look very similar to me, so we should really be merging those fields together. And in Tableau Prep, 
What all I have to do is just drag and drop to merge. Watch. Uh, I'm going to drag the other one so that I can persist the correct casing. <laughs> so I just dragged event URL and just dropped it. And now there's no longer a mismatch on event URL. And if we look here, you can see that the event URL field now has matching from all three tables. Awesome. OK. On to our second design principle, smart. We believe that algorithms should augment human intelligence. We believe that we can use ML and AI to help our customers quickly and easily address some of the most common data prep issues. Here's one way that we do it. We have smart grouping algorithms that use and are, are standardized based off of some of the most common uh, issues that you might see for your categorical fields. And I'll show you an example of that in a little bit. We also have data roles. And what this allows you to do is, again, standardize based off of what we know to be uh, standard mappings for, for certain types of fields. For example, we know that zip codes are zip codes, right? In the US, a zip code is five digits. Depending on who you talk to, sometimes it's nine. But we, want you, we don't want you to go in and do that manually. You simply assign a zip code, uh, a, a zip code data role, and it'll go in and identify which ones in, your, in that field map to that data role and which ones don't so that you can quickly filter. We also have it for URLs, emails, et cetera. So this helps you find incorrect data even faster. All right, so let's quickly take a look at that. All right, so we remember this event URL field. Let's make sure that all of our URLs are actually correct. Now, Typically, you'd have to go in and check each individual value. But in Tableau Prep, you don't have to. So I'll just go in here. Oh, whoops. Under the data roles. And from here, I can select one of these, or I can select a geographic role. But what's relevant to us is URL. So let's just do that. And just like that, I was able to identify that two of the values did not map to our, to our standardized mapping for, U, for uh, URLs. So I'll go ahead and select these and just exclude. Let's do the same thing for zip code. And let's actually just view all of the values and just look at it as detail. And I'll actually make it a string since that's more correct. And then again, I'm going to oops, map it to a zip code. And now let's take a look. Do you guys see the tool that I'm using here? It allows me to just quickly navigate to all of the different places. And there's also a built-in histogram in there so I can see the distribution. But there don't, there don't seem to be any incorrect zip codes, which is awesome. OK. Park name. Take a look at these two park names, Albany Park and Albany Park North Park. These are likely the same thing. Now, I can go in and edit this manually, no problem. But there are likely other errors as well. And in, in, instead of going through and comparing and making sure that my data looks correct, I'm actually just going to go in and use one of my smart algorithms. So I'll go into the dot, dot, dot menu. And under the group and replace, I'm going to use pronunciation. Just like that, Armour Square is now grouped. So is Avondale. So is Beverly. All of these were way down below, right? I didn't even see them. And there were still some duplicated values. And now they're, now they're grouped. And I can quickly see that. OK. So there were still some mismatched fields that we were dealing with, right? And I showed you how to group those using drag and drop, because visual and direct, right? 
But there's also what we call smart, uh, smart uh, union recommendations that will help you identify these. For example, right now I s I've selected on park name. And what that does is says, hey, which one of the other mismatched fields is very similar to this? And it will give you a highlight in yellow so that you can press the plus sign and merge the two. So let's do that. Similar thing with zip code. I didn't have to do anything else. All, it just it did all the work for me. So that's another smart capability that we have in the product. Uh, so contact email seems to be the only mismatched field, and we don't have anything else to map to it, so we'll just leave it as is. All right. And here's another piece of uh, how we introduce smarts into the product that is really under the hood. You can't really see it. I can't really show it to you unless we decide to sit and read code together, uh, which probably isn't an exercise you want to do with me. Um, but we have an intelligent execution engine that makes that basically takes the thinking out of the equation. So for example, when you're building visualizations in Tableau des Desktop, do you have to worry about the queries that are being run? No, right? All you have to worry about is how does my viz look? Is my viz answering the right questions? You're not worrying about where is this query coming from? How is it being structured, right? None of those questions are, are you're not asking yourself any of those questions. And we want to make sure that you're not having to think through that when you're preparing your data. We just want you to prepare your data. We'll take care of the rest. So we have an intelligent execution engine that allows you to prepare data for, that comes from any one of the connectors that we currently support. So we don't have limitations on joins or unions, right? Some of the limitations that exist in Tableau Desktop data prep today. Um, but in addition to that, if your source database does not support some of the queries, we will just run it against our own federation engine so that you're able to prepare that data as well, which is pretty amazing. But in addition to that, we minimize unnecessary data movement, right? For example, if you do a filter in the second to last step before your output that gets rid of 100,000 rows, for example, we actually push that downstream to an earlier spot in the flow without you knowing when you run the flow so that your flow can be more efficient, right? If you think about it, had I removed those 100,000 rows prior to getting to a later point in my flow, my flow would have been running a lot faster. And so to optimize for that, we will figure out where the best place is to run which query and handle it that way. OK. Here's the final piece for us today. We are integrated with Tableau. As I showed you, here are some of the data connectors that we have. Uh, we're not quite at parity with Tableau Desktop, but we will be eventually. Um, we use the same calculation language as Tableau Desktop. So if you know how to write a calculation in Tableau, you'll be able to write a calculation in Tableau Prep as well. You can open your data in Tableau Desktop at any point. Here's why that's powerful. Remember that cycle of analytics that I showed you earlier and how it's linear, but really we want some sort of flexibility? What that means is that the transition between data prep and analysis needs to be flexible so that you can bounce back and forth between the two seamlessly. And that's what this open in Tableau option allows you to do. You open in Tableau, you say, hey, is my data structured the way that I want to? Can I answer my, the question that I started with? Can I answer, are there more questions that I need to, to answer with this data? And as a result, is there more data prep that I need to do? It allows you to, to think through all of that at any stage in your flow. And then finally, you can publish your data source to Tableau, Desk, sorry, to Tableau Online, 
Tableau server, uh, or to your local, uh, your local path or to a UNC path. We leverage Hyper as well as Tableau's execution engine, as I mentioned earlier. OK, so let's, let's finish our demo here. And I'll, I'll highlight some of those other points along the way. OK, so we've unioned our three Chicago tables, and we've joined our two mo movie tables. And now I think we're ready to combine the two. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to do that with a join. So I'm going to drag and drop to join. Great. And Tableau Prep was smart enough to say, hey, the best join that you can do right now is on movie title and movie name. And an inner join looks right for you. So just use that. Um, and then I can see what was excluded and what was included. And we can expect a large number of excluded values since we had uh, movies dating from 1974 to 2017, but really we wanted to deal with movies from 2014 to 2016. As I mentioned earlier, here's our bar graph that shows us how we started and where we ended, what was included and what was excluded. And I can see the results of my table as well, right? Here is a field from that first join. And here are some of the fields from my second, from my union. Oops, the yellow are the ones from the union. And they're now all combined in a table. OK. Earlier, we talked about opening in Tableau. So let's actually go ahead and open it in Tableau and see if this addresses the question that we started with. So I'm just going to right click and say, hey, Please preview this in Tableau Desktop. I'm sorry for the messy desktop, but the elephant is pretty cute. Um, and at this point, I can say, hey, drag av average rating, but actually make it an average. And then give me park name, please. And here we have our graph. Let's go ahead and sort. And it looks like Revere Park. Anybody from Chicago? Yeah? Is Revere Park an awesome park? Revere Park. You haven't been. Apparently, they show the highest rated movies. <laughs> um, so we were able to, to know now that, hey, we prepared our data to answer the question that was most important to us. Now, at this point, what we can do is create an output. There we go. And we can publish our data to Tableau Online or Tableau Server. And if you're, if you're using Tableau Prep Conductor, uh, and once it comes out, you'll be able to publish this flow and create a schedule. Now, that is, it makes me so happy that we finally have that. <laughs> I'm as happy as you all are. Um, I, I was doing a lot of the road shows uh, for the launch. Uh, so I went to Chicago and New York and Atlanta and San Francisco and like one in Seattle as well. So I was doing a lot of travel uh, sort of with, with the product talking to crowds like, you, like yourselves. And the number one question that I would get asked over and over again was scheduling. Um, so I feel like my life just became easier. <laughs> um, OK, so I think we've done that demo. I want to show you guys one more demo, and then I will open it up for questions. And I'm going to do this one like at a faster pace, just to make sure you're all still awake. OK, so I'm going to close this one down. And we're going to problem solve along the way as well, or, or try to. Oops. That is the completed flow. Don't, go, don't, don't show me that. That was showed my secrets away. That's not cool. All right, here we go. So we have three data sources on uh, traffic stops and violent crimes in the state of Wisconsin. And I want to understand if, whether there's a correlation between traffic stops and violent crimes. So if a county has 
a lot of traffic stops, did that mean, does that mean that they also have a lot of violent crimes? Who knows? We'll see. So right off the bat, I'm going to go ahead and union these two tables, because that seems like the right thing to do. And here we have some mismatched fields, vehicle type and vehicle make, and I'm going to use my smart union recommendations to go ahead and fix that up. Come on. You can do it. I, let's, let's use the other one. Drag and drop to fix. Thank you. Ooh. Sorry about that. Uh-oh. All right, we're good. All right, it's back. Uh, and as of the October release, we, was it October? I think it was October. We introduced the ability to clean your data inside unions and pivots and, and things like that. Oh, let, uh, let me take a screenshot of that. Well, I'll come back to it later. It's all good. Sorry about that. I'm using a, uh, a developer build. So it says Tableau prep. There we go. So stuff like that sometimes happens on the fly. Um, so we introduced a feature called change your, uh, clean your data anywhere. Uh, and allows you to clean your data inside joins and unions and things like that. And I showed you guys an example of that, but didn't really call it out explicitly. Wrong one. Sorry about that. Oops. I think it's this one. Nope. Haha. -ha. There we go. Let's try. It. Let's try that again. So I'm gonna drag my three inputs. I'm going to create a union. We're going to drag and drop some fields to correct some stuff. So to that, year of stop to year of stop. OK. We won't do that. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. So like I said, the three design principles that uh, are really sort of, uh, they, they really sort of help light the path for us when we're building the product. And these are, the re this is the reason why Tableau Prep is the product that it is today. And this is the, these are the three reasons why Tableau Desktop uh, has become such a powerful tool, is because, it, it, it's because of its ease of use. Um, so there's a ton of, uh, sessions on Tableau Prep that you're welcome to go and uh, look at. I didn't want to pick out any specific ones just because that's hard. Um, so I just will leave that difficult task to you. Um, but you're welcome to, to, to go and take a look at any of these. Please complete the session survey and let us know. Uh, and I hope you've had a chance to learn a little bit about prepping your data the Tableau Prep way. Thank you. Thank you. This is my email uh, and my t Twitter handle. I'm happy to take questions, but I would love to take questions, uh, like I would love to do it together. Uh, so if, if, if you want to head out, please feel free to head out. Uh, but because one question, someone's question might also be another person's question. So I want to, uh, if you have questions, let's just move to the top, to, towards the front, and then uh, I can take your questions. Yeah, it should it shouldn't have happened, but it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sh it sh that, I don't think that's the reason why I've done I've done it before, but that's that's a good that's a good check. I'll I'll I'll, t I'll double check that. Is it integrated with Tableau or will be integrated at some point? Um, we're still sorting out how we want what we want to do about that. Uh, right now, there are some certain some use cases in which the Tableau Desktop Data Prep experience is really appropriate. So if you're just bringing in a single table or doing a very simple join, then Tableau Desktop Data Prep is uh, a good tool to use. Um, but right now, our current plan is to continue investing in the application um, in its sort of uh, individual form. Um, but you know, 
it's, it's something that we could consider doing. Yes. Okay, so the question was, is Tableau Prep Conductor a separate license? So Tableau Prep Conductor, uh, we announced it. Uh, it it's part of the 2019.1 beta that was released on Tuesday. Um, to answer your question, it is a separate add-on to Tableau Server and Tableau Online. So it would be licensed separately, yes. Tableau Prep is licensed se separately at the moment as well, but, oh, I was going to talk about how it's licensed. Second question, when you get to it, when do you expect to roll out a build for the Ah. Um, so to answer your licensing question, just for a moment, just to sort of add a little bit more detail, uh, Tableau Prep conduct, sorry, Tableau Prep uh, is included for free as part of the creator license. Uh, and the creator, explorer, viewer, SKU is something new that we rolled out on uh, April 24th. Um, if you are on Tableau Desktop with, uh, with a ma maintenance agreement, you will get Tableau Prep for free until June 30th, 2020. Uh, and then we'll figure that out. We'll figure out what happens after that. We'll, we're still sorting out how we want to handle it after that. Um, to answer your second question, Salesforce Connector. Uh, we know that it's a need, um, and we're still, there, there are a lot of connectors that we have yet to add, and so we're still sorting through and, and prioritizing. Um, but if you have a compelling use case, uh, I think there's probably a community idea out there about it, so go in and, and, and give it a vote. And um, like I think the top 10 uh, requests uh, we're slowly chipping away at them, so we totally pay attention to the forums, and we're in there all the time. Um, so please, uh, please lift it up a little higher. <laughs> um, oh man, I don't know who was first. Sure. Can you use the results of a Tableau query? What do you mean by a Tableau query? Okay. Is there an easy way to have that flow without having to go to Tableau? Okay, so if you've brought in data into Tableau Desktop, can I, you're asking, can I use it in Tableau Prep? Yes. So what you can do is create an extract, hyper or TDE extract, and then, and then you connect to it in Tableau Prep. Yeah. Yes. And that actually kind of goes off of my question. We have a Hadoop mm -hmm. uh, environment with Tableau mm -hmm. Prep. Yeah. Um, I don't have a best practice off the top of my head, but um, our general recommendation, right, is like treat it the way that you would any other connection um, and, and, see, and see if that works. But if you run into challenges, let us know. Um, yeah. Ooh. Uh, someone new. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, totally. Yeah, you can fix it. The, the, what we do is we just highlight which one's wrong. So you can go. So you, you can manually fix it. Um, you can filter it out. You can uh, map it to an all. You can do all sorts of things. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so her question is, sorry, I should be repeating questions and I'm not, I'm sorry about that. Uh, her question is, we created a union with three different tables, but what if I have new tables coming in, let's say every day, I don't think that was your example, but say every day, can a brand new union be added to it? 
So there is a limitation on the number of unions that you can create that way. And that limitation is 10. And the reason for that is because we don't want your flows to become too, over, too overflown. <laughs> um, but what you can do if you have data that is coming in uh, at some sort of rapid pace is create uh, a wildcard union based on, so similarly to what you would do in Tableau Desktop. Um, and so you can, you can have it read and say, if this data ends in CSV, union all of it and just give me those results. And so that's part of the input experience as well. And here's the beautiful part. We also have it for databases. Yeah, 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 it's great. It makes me very happy. Um, yes, sir. Uh, so we do have the, we do give you the ability to write custom SQL. Um, so if you write a custom SQL statement inside a un, an input, you can continue unioning those results and, and anything else that you've done, right? Anything that you've done in the input, you should be able to reuse later on in your flow as well. Um, what was your second question? Join, join calculations. Uh, so we're still continuing to add support for more advanced calculations. Um, I don't believe you can do join calculations, but I can double check and get back to you on that. Uh, okay, sir, sorry. Yeah. Uh, okay, so his question is, can I join my pre-existing Tableau data source inside Tableau prep? Or no, can I join my Tableau prep flow to a pre-existing Tableau uh, desktop data source? Is that your question? Okay. Um, so it's on a refresh schedule? Okay. So the solution for that, right, would be to connect to a published data source. But we don't have support for published data sources today. But you can create an extract. That's where I was going to go. You can create an, I just wanted to give you the honest truth first. <laughs> but you can create an extract and then do your joins and unions and whatever data prep you need to do. Yeah. Uh, uh, I've already taken a question from you. But I will, I, I will come back for second questions. Yes, sir. Yes. The reason for that was because I had selected publish to data source and I hadn't given it publish data source and I hadn't given it a server. Oh, um, so the results will look as they do in the output. We, 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 we. Oh, so what's happened to each step would still be the same, right? You'd still get, be getting the same results. We just might run some queries earlier. So the transparency is. Yeah. And then, you know, and then do the filter later. My assumption is that I had a full set there. Sure. You're filtering later. I want to make, I want to see what's happening. Yeah. So let me quickly show something here. Uh, let's see if it, let's just look at the pre built flow here. Um, so if you look here, we're capturing changes along the way. Regardless of what you're doing, we're capturing changes so you can see what those changes were. Uh, what, I was, what I said earlier is that if you do a, uh, 
some sort of filtering activity a little later on in your flow, we will sometimes push it towards the front if it's not affecting your data in any way, if it's, not expect, if, if it's not affecting the results in any way. So we don't do it in a way that alters your results in any way, which means that what we're capturing here is the truth 100% in these changes. OK. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Will there be a way, or is there a way to add your own custom data profiles? Like, say we want to do mm -hmm. part numbers that need to be yeah. a certain way. That's a really great question. Uh, my teammate Zahira, who did the Vision Keynote uh, on Tuesday morning, showed an example of that. Um, it's more forward-looking, of course, so it's a functionality that we will have sometime later, but eventually. Um, yes? So the types of outputs that we create today are TDE, hyper, extracts, both of, sorry? Oh, I don't, someone said wait. Uh, and then CSV. We can go straight to CSV. Yes, ma'am. Um, yeah. Sure. Uh, so right. So that is a common ask, and it's something that we're considering investing in. Uh, if there are use cases that you want to tell us about, or if it's an idea that's super important to you, um, similar to what I told uh, the woman earlier, please go on and submit a forum idea. Yeah. What other questions? Yes. Sorry? Is it built with Alteryx? Uh, no, this is all Tableau. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So earlier, you assigned the data roles before you merged the mismatches. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Carry over? Okay. Yep. It's cool, right? Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Any address geocoding? Yes. Let me show you. Uh, so the the geo the geographic role support that we have are these, but you can't do complex geographic data prep in Tableau Prep today. But you can assign. Um, zip code, like we did earlier, county, city, etc. Yes. Uh, as as I mentioned earlier, it was something that was shown in the vision keynote as by one of my teammates Tuesday morning as being something that's uh, more forward looking. So his question was, can I create my own data role? Uh, no, you're fine. No, you're fine. And 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 the answer there is eventually. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. I believe it's built to handle uh, zip, zip, any kind of zip code. Yeah. Cool. Yes. Yeah, I mean, so if there are some calculations that need to be written uh, in the data prep experience. Um, for example, if, com if you're computing some kind of new field, like, I don't know, profit or something, uh, and you want to make sure that that field looks the way that you want it to look, or you want to look at the distribution and identify outliers and eliminate certain rows based off of that, you might want to do it in the data prep experience. So that when you get to Tableau, it's clean, you just drag and drop, build your visualizations, and then your dashboard, and then your stories, and then share it, and then you're fine. Yeah. Um, yes. Yes, you can. Uh, here's where you go. Let me show you. You split values. You can do a custom split. 
or an automatic split. Yes. Yes, that's a really great question. This question is, will there, once you publish a flow up to Tableau Prep Conductor, will there be some transparency around what kind of cleaning or transforming of data took place? So when you publish your data source, your, sorry, your flow up to Tableau Prep Conductor, what happens is we publish up an image of the flow. Uh, and then from there, uh, you can schedule and do other things as well. The changes that I showed you can only access inside the desktop application. So the best approach there is if you have, if you see a data source that was created in Tableau Prep that you want to sort of delve deep a little, a little deeper into and take a look at the flow and understand the changes, you would need to download the flow itself and open it in Tableau Prep. Hi. Yeah. Uh, uh, so are these sort of like repeat operations? Um, it would vary. So you, you would want to like automate it in some way? Okay. So her question is, would there be some way of sort of automating some subset of operations uh, inside Tableau Prep? Is that right? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so her example is certain models of musical instruments might drop off from year to year. So is there an automated way of detecting that? Um, so for what, you could, what you could do is write a calculation that removes uh, some, some models based off of right, some sort of expression. And then that way, once new data comes in, that calculation is being run against that data. So that's, that would be one way of addressing that. Yeah. All right. Cool. Hey, thank you all very much. Really appreciate it.